and of his creation. Welcome, everyone. The program is called The Shedding Shackles. And this program is not uh, going to be a big seller. You know, it's not going to have millions of listeners, but it's for a few people who appreciate something that helps to wake them up to realize. And so hopefully that's what this program will do for you. Now, I wanted to mention something about light. Continue talking about light. I want you to see, look, if you go, remember I was telling you earlier about uh, the half bath that we have downstairs? And there's no window. It's just a little half bath so the guests can wash their hands if they're visiting. So we have this little half bath. If, if I go in there and I close the door, then it's totally dark, okay? All right, so you close your eyes. You go into this kind of a bathroom or you can go into your own bathroom or you can just take, you know, if you're sitting somewhere quietly right now on your sofa or in a chair or at the office, you know, just sitting in the lunchroom or whatever. You can put your palms delicately over your eyes and cover them so it becomes dark, totally dark. In other words, no outside you know light is coming in. And then look at the inside of your eyelids and what do you see? You are gonna, you're gonna say, well, I don't see anything. Oh, yes, you do. You see a delicate glow of light, a delicate little patterns of light, little pixels of light, probably moving around or maybe still, but there they are, little delicate pixels of light you can see. It's a warm glow on the inside of your eyelids. Do you know what that is? That's spiritual light. And light is light. It's a real thing. And I said that love is a real thing. Love is not nothing, it's something. And light is not nothing, it's something. And when you close your eyes and you look at the inside of your eyelids, you see little pixels of light. And that is light. It's not nothing, it's something. And what is that? It's illuminating your inside. You see, inside, you have like a universe inside. You have all the, your brain cells, they're like stars. Millions of them, billions of them, like a universe. And there is light shining. When you close your eyes, you can see that spiritual light and it illuminates, it enlightens. It gives you intuition and foresight and hindsight and realizations and understanding and wisdom and love. All of those are contained in that light when you receive it, but you have to receive it. You have to receive it with joy and a willingness to know the truth. See, what does is, what is light make you aware of? It makes you aware of truth. You see things the way they are. Just like sunlight, you see things. Well, spiritual light shines within. And you can see and you can understand. And that light shines in your inside. And it gives light, special light, a special energy, love energy to your whole body. And then you can go out in the world and then you can express this love with your face, with a gesture, with your words. But what do most of us express before the time of enlightenment, before you seek truth sincerely and find it and find this inner light and love it and walk in it? Until that time, you walk in darkness, don't you? You walk in the eerie light of your imagination. You always are escaping into your imagination. And down in your imagination, thoughts talk to you. And you think they're your own thoughts. But where do they come from? They come from what's on the other side of your imagination and your mind. On the other side is the void. That's right. On the one side, you have the shining light. The shining light! But on the other side is the void. And that's where the dark thoughts come from, the void. So if you're not in walking in God's light, if you don't love his light, if you're not interested in truth, if you want to be God and play God instead of knowing God. See, most of us want to play, want to play God. We want to be God. We want people to worship us. We want people to admire us. 
We become angry if anybody looks at us funny. If anybody doesn't see us in a good light, we immediately become angry and hateful. That's right. So that's really not a very nice way of existing, is it? But if you could get your ego out of the way and realize that you're not God, that's all. <laughs> you're not God. And stop trying to play God. And eat humble pie a little bit, but don't resent it. See, res resentment is resistance. What do we resist? Mostly we resist the truth. We resent the truth. See, if somebody doesn't see you in a good light, actually what they're probably seeing is the truth. You're not that great of a person. Yeah, you're a little bit phony. You're a little bit dishonest. You're a little bit sneaky. And yet you pretend to be good and pretend to be nice. So, you know, if you have a kid and the kid is sees you for what you are, then what do you do? You slap him around. You put him down. You use your your devilish cleverness that comes up from your imagination to make it appear like he's wrong, like he's bad. That's right. So I think it's time that you that you start to look for your creator and realize that God is God and you're not God. That would be a very nice realization on your part. It might be a little painful to your ego. But then where did this ego pride come from? Well, you inherited it. So you can't even take credit for it. So you're always trying to take credit for everything. And when things don't go wrong, you blame yourself. See, even that's another ego trip. So stop blaming yourself. Realize that your ideas aren't your own. The ego pride that you have, you didn't give yourself that nature. It came down to you generation to generation. And so basically what you are is a, a big nothing, just reflecting what's been spoon-fed into you and programmed into you and given to you and you got by inheritance. So there you are, a big nothing. Okay, so just be a nothing for a while. Don't resent being a nothing. Maybe God can make you into a something. If you want to become a something of God, you have to become a nothing. But don't try to make yourself into a nothing. That would be another ego trip. So just see all of that. And instead of sitting around feeling sorry for yourself and trying to make everybody think you're a wonderful person when you're really not a wonderful person, just knock it off. Let your hair down. Do your work. Do your duty. And quietly begin to ponder the mystery and the marvels all around you. Look at other people. And instead of hating them, instead of judging them, just watch them and marvel. Don't say this is a nice person, that's a terrible person, he's good, she's bad. Stop making all these judgments. Stop naming everything. Here's a table, there's a chair, there's a coffee cup, there's a pen. Stop trying to play God, naming everything and judging everything. Just observe, stand back, and just watch things like when you were a little child. Stop trying to be a big God controlling everything. You, you remember the Wizard of Oz, especially the original one with with Judy Garland, remember? Do you remember toward the end of the movie, finally there was the Wizard of Oz. He stood behind this curtain and he pulled these levers and he made this big light show and sound show that scared everybody. I'm the great Wizard of Oz. And Dorothy's little dog Toto went and <laughs> pulled on the curtain and pulled the curtain back and there was this little, this little old man pretending to be the great wizard of Oz. He was just a little man. So that's the way you've been. You've been pretending to be this great person, taking responsibility on yourself and then blaming yourself and one ego trip after another. So just knock it off. Just go about your business. Become like a little child again. If there's something you can enjoy, enjoy it. If you see something that's kind of neat, see that it's kind of neat and just it, and enjoy it. And if something's not so good, then don't hate it. Just see it and see the clouds and the blue sky and the flowers. Have you seen this summer? I've never seen so many flowers in all my life as this summer. I think this has been one of the most wonderful springs and summers for flowers. I don't know if you agree with me, but it seems like there's more flowers, beautiful flowers blooming. So see them, appreciate them, and just enjoy them. Don't try to take a picture of them or cut them off or analyze them or name them, just see them and appreciate them.